we looked at class full IP version 4 addressing. And as we move towards IP version 6, um, let's look at classless inner domain routing or CIDR. And I'm just going to pull up some, you know, some numbers that we've subnetted and look at the CIDR notation here. And let's see how we would calculate or how would you represent that with a subnet mask looking at that CIDR notation. So in the first example, we have a class C address. Okay, and normally class C is remember three octets. Our three bytes are used for the network ID. And the last byte or the last octet is the host portion. So there would be 24 bits or three bytes. But if the CIDR is 28, then that's, we can tell there are four additional bits that are being used for subnetting in the last octet. So the 24 here for the network plus an additional four here for subnetting would give us the CIDR 28. So if I know that four bits are being used for subnetting in the last octet, I know that this is my combination. And if I know that's my combination, that gives me everything else. I know that if I'm using four bits, that gives me my block value, which is 16, the lowest bit in the table. And that gives me my subnet mask. If I add all these together, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16, that gives me 240. And if I want to check that, if I were to subtract 240 from 256, again, I get my block. There's my block value. That gives me the number of subnets possible and the number of hosts possible by plugging it into my formula, 2 to the power of x minus 2. And that gives me the bits being used for both the host and the submitting. So if I know all those things, with CIDR 28 on this class C address, here's what I would have for network broadcast and actual IPs. Based on my block value, which is the base multiple, I would go 16, 32, 48, 64, and 80. The broadcast would be simply the next network, like N2, N3, N4, N5, minus 1. So 31, 47, 63, 79, and 95, respectively. The start and end IP addresses, the valid ones, would be I'd have to add 1 to the network and start at 17, and I'd have to subtract 1 from the broadcast and end at 30. And if I count all those up, 17 to 30, those are my 14 hosts that I calculated here with my formula. So that would be a class C address with CIDR notation of 28 bits. All right, so forward slash 28. Let's look at another example using CIDR notation or classless inner domain routing. Previous example was class A, uh, class C. This is a class B address, 135, and the CIDR notation is forward slash 24. Again, now a class B address normally utilizes the first two octets or bytes, that is the first 16 bits, for the network address. But this is CIDR 24, so I know that there's an additional eight bits, basically the entire third octet that's being used for submitting. Now this is special because if I'm using an entire octet or an entire byte, my block value is 1. If you think about it, if I were to turn all of these off, then I could literally, the lowest one I would turn on would be in the 1 place or the 1 column. So it's sort of an exception to these combinations here. It still obeys the rules in the sense that if you know I'm not turning everything off, I still have 1 on. But my lowest bit value, my block value is 1 when I'm subnetting an entire octet. So what this will do is, sort of interestingly enough, it'll make this class B address subnet as though it were a collection of class C addresses. Because if you think about it, the subnet mask would be the same, right? If this were a class C address, the default subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0. This is class B, which is normally 255.255.0.0. But because I'm subnetting that third octet, it's going to have the same subnet mask as class C. So let's plug that into our formula. And if we were to plug it into our formula, 2 to the power of 8 minus R2, we get 254 subnets are possible, and 254 hosts are possible for each subnet. So basically, each subnet of this class B network acts like an entire class C network. It's a way to aggregate or combine multiple subnets. Um, it would be like combining a bunch of class C networks together almost. And you know many organizations will utilize this kind of, of subnetting structure, in, you know, in a class B environment to combine multiple subnets. The bits used for subnetting are eight, and the bits used for host are eight because there's only one octet or one byte left. The subnet mask, again, remember, if this were normal class B, it would be 255.255.0.0. .0 .0. But since we're subnetting 
all eight bits in the third octet or the third byte, it looks like a class C subnet mask. 255.255.255.0. So if I have all this and I know all this, and I know now what CIDR24 is and what it does, this gives me everything I need to fill in my table. So based on the block value, the base multiple, which is just one, I can populate my network addresses. And so I would go down 135.16.1234 and 5 respectively. And then my broadcast, which would simply be all the bits turned on in the last octet or the last byte. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then of course 255 5 in the last octet. And my start and end range is going to be everything in between. So I add 1 to my network, I get my first valid starting IP. I subtract 1 from my broadcast, I get my last valid ending IP. And notice that that looks just like a class C network, 254 hosts. Okay, so we looked at class C and class B. Let's look at another class C. This class C has CIDR26. CIDR26, well, let's examine. A normal class C address has what? 24 bits or 3 bytes or octets for the network part. And the last octet or byte or 8 bits is left for hosts. However, instead of 24, this is CIDR26. So I can tell by this that in addition to the 24 for the network, there's two additional bits that are being used for subnetting. If that's the case and I plug it into my formulas, I know that it's this one that it matches up to. 2 to the power of 2 since I'm using 2 bits, you know, over the 24 for the subnetting. That gives me 2 subnets and 62 hosts per subnet. If I were to populate or fill that out in a byte table, my lowest bit value would be 64. So therefore 64 is my block. Looking at these settings, so I know that the number of subnets possible is 2, the number of hosts is 62, the number of bits for subnetting is 2, the number of bits for host is 6. My subnet mask would be 192 if I add these two bits together. And of course my block is going to be the lowest bit, or if I were to simply subtract the subnet mask 192 from 256, again I would get 64. So let's look at the, the range of possible values here. I know that based on the base multiple or the block, I would have to start at 64 and 128 respectively for my networks. I know that my broadcast would simply be one less than the next network's uh, you know, starting address. So if I subtract one, I get 127 and 191. And if I know these two columns, then finding the range is easy. Um, I would add one to my network, and that would give me my first starting IP. And I would subtract one from my broadcast, and that would give me my last ending IP, you know, the ones I could actually use. I would add one to my network, and it gives me my first starting IP. And I subtract one from my broadcast, and it gives me my last ending IP. All right, so that's for CIDR notation 26. The last example, let's look at number four here. And this is CIDR 24, and we're using a class A address. Normally a class A address only you know, uses 8 bits or 1 byte or octet for the network portion, and the remaining 24 bits are used for hosts. However, this tells us CIDR24, so what does that say? In addition to the 8 bits for the network, I'm using the second and the third octet um, you know, for subnetting. So I've borrowed 16 bits from the hosts, 24 total. And basically that gives us, again, that's going to give us a block value of 1 because that gives us an entire octet where the lowest value we could turn on would be in the 1 place, or the 1 bit. So if I go through this, um, the number of subnets possible where I had to plug that into my formula, 2 to the power of 16 minus 2, 65,534. The number of hosts, 2 to the power of 8 minus 2, or 254. The number of bits used for subnetting would be 16. The number of bits used for host would be 8. So there are 65,534 possible subnets or networks, and I can fit 254 hosts on each network. And again, this is sort of the exception to the rule. Since I'm using an entire octet, my block value is 1. Okay. And again, if I were to add all these up, think about it. I get a 255, and if I subtract 255 from 256, I get 1. So the rules match up. So how would this look, or how would this work? Well, based on the, you know, if the base multiple is 1 or the block value is 1, here are all my network addresses. 10010, 10, 10, 2, 3, 4, and 5. My broadcast would simply be all the bits turned on in the last octet. 
So 10, 0, 1, 2, 5, 5. And then again, um, the remaining would be 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then all the bits turned on in the last octet, 2, 5, 5. If I know this, and I know this, the network and the broadcast, then it's easy to find the valid range of IPs in between. I simply add one to get my first valid starting IP, and I subtract one from the broadcast to get my last valid ending IP. And I again, I would do that all the way down for each of those. 